Okay, in this video, I'm going to um, cover an example on ARIMA modeling uh, coming from Chapter 18 of Tabachnik and Fidel's uh, book uh, using multivariate statistics, uh, sixth edition. Um, this chapter, uh, this is Chapter 18 uh, on time series analysis, and it's not actually uh, included as a in the hard copy, but it is downloadable from the website. So. Um, the data that we're working from um, concerns uh, measures of uh, computer quality over a 20-week period. So this is the data that is in Chapter 18 of their textbook. And um, the authors basically walk you through a series of steps um, involved in um, identifying and estimating um, ARIMA models uh, and then uh, kind of uh, uh, you know, diagnosing problems and, and so forth. So what I thought I would do is kind of walk you through um, some of the processes that are included in our textbook. I actually um, go through a couple of these processes in um, a couple of previous videos, but um, I'm going to uh, re-demonstrate those processes here and then walk you through uh, the actual ARIMA process using SPSS. So, the data set um, is uh, this in, SP in SPSS, so I have a variable for week and a variable for quality. Um, so, you know, in their textbook, they basically um, discuss three phases of ARIMA modeling. Um, phase one is essentially identification of the AR and MA processes, or the autoregressive and moving average processes. Step two uh, involves estimation of your model, and step three involves um, sort of a diagnostic phase uh, trying to determine if um, your uh, residuals uh, follow a white noise process. <clears throat> so um, we'll start off um, in our process. The first thing that we have to do is really uh, determine if um, our series on our um, repeated measure uh, exhibits a stationary process. And what that means is uh, we're, we're addressing the question of uh, whether the mean of the process and the variance of the process is consistent over time. So to do this, we'll go to analyze uh, forecasting and then go down to sequence charts. And uh, what we'll do is we'll move uh, week or time variable over to the time variables axis and our um, um, our time variable, um, our repeated measurement quality over to the variables box. And at this point, we're just going to leave everything as it is and just click on OK. And so now when we look at our, um, our um, t uh, sequence plot, you'll notice that um, you can see uh, sort of a, a trending on this variable. So in other words, quality appears to be increasing uh, over time in a fairly linear um, fashion. Um, there also might be some evidence of some, some, um, some uh, non-constant variation as well. So what, we're going to check this out by um, rerunning this uh, time plot, but then also incorporating uh, uh, differencing on our variables. So I'm going to go to uh, Sequence Charts again and click on Difference. And um, differencing basically involves... Um, what we're trying to do is uh, we're trying to uh, determine uh, our uh, AR and MA processes, but uh, what we have to have to do that is um, stationarity. So um, the way that we do this is by essentially um, factoring out uh, any uh, trending on your variable, um, and then based on that, then we can kind of ass assess those processes. So a first difference is used if you um, are looking at the data and it looks like there's an evidence of a linear trend. You would use sec second order differencing if you had something along the, the lines of a quadratic trend. So we're going to stick with a first order differencing and see what happens. So I'm going to click on OK. And so now you can see that, you know, our pr previous chart where we, you know, it looked like we had a linear trend, we factored that out so that now, you know, it looks much more horizontal and, and uh, essentially, um, our, um, our plot is around a constant mean. Um, now, there's some evidence, perhaps, of uh, different uh, levels of variation across different uh, time points. So you can see, like, there appears to be less variation 
uh, around the uh, constant mean at, at you know in, in the first few weeks, whereas you see much greater variation uh, later on. So um, if we wanted to address that issue, what we could do is we could go uh, we can rerun our analysis. Uh, with our sequence charts and see what happens if we use a natural log transformation um, of, uh, of the different variables. So um, I'll click on OK and you, you really, as you can see, it doesn't appear to do a, a lot in terms of changing um, our, our uh, difference variable, our first uh, difference variable. So um, just uh, kind of remaining consistent with the presentation of the book, we're just going to leave this as um, as just a first difference variable. But um, you know, moving on from here, we will not uh, uh, utilize the um, log transformation. So now we'll go to analyze, and so we we've kind of determined, uh, or we've we've sort of made our variable stationary through the process of first differencing. And now we want to uh, assess um, our variable for um, elements of autoregressive and moving average processes. So um, the way that we do this is, um, in part, we can utilize the um, autocorrelation and partial autocorrelations, essentially um, computing those, and then looking at um, uh, those autocorrelations and partial autocorrelations uh, using a correlate correl correl Gram, excuse me, correlogram. So we're going to click on autocorrelations and we're going to move uh, quality over to the variables box and uh, click on uh, difference because we, you know, we, we need the differencing to occur prior to uh, assessing those processes. So I'm going to click on difference because we are not going to uh, utilize um, the tra log transformation of the difference variable. We're going to leave this at, uh, leave this alone. And uh, then we'll click on OK. All right, so now what we see is we have um, our autocorrelations, which is essentially the correlation between uh, quality at time t and various lag versions of that variable. So this is uh, the correlation uh, with quality at time t and uh, t minus 1. So there's lag 1 here, lag 2 all the way through lag 16. And we could actually ask for more uh, lags if we want, but uh, the default in SBS is 16, so we'll stick there. If we wanted um, a, um, a longer lag structure, what we could do is um, it, we could just basically go under options and ask for uh, a larger number of uh, lags. Um, so at any rate, uh, we have uh, the autocorrelations and their associated significance levels. Um, you'll, and this is a correlogram uh, where basically we're plotting those autocorrelations um, um, at, uh, at various lags with the original quality variable at time t. So you can see uh, with the autocorrelation function, you can see uh, the largest autocorrelation is at lag 1, and you can see that um, we have really kind of low-level autocorrelations at later lags. We also have a partial autocorrelation um, plot, which are uh, partial autocorrelations, which is essentially the uh, autocorrelation between a given lag and the measurement at time t, uh, controlling for the previous lags. So you'll notice that the first uh, lag, the, the first partial autocorrelation will actually equal the autocorrelation from uh, this uh, table right here. But then the remaining autocorrelations essentially are parceling out the previous autocorrelations from the, the, um, the um, um, current lag um, time t relationship. And then here we have the partial autocorrelation function uh, chart as well. So, uh, and you can see that we have kind of a decaying um, uh, autocorrelations uh, over the lag. So you can see it's kind of decaying right here. Um, so the way that we uh, identify uh, autocorrelation and partial autocorrelation um, uh, processes uh, is we can compare um, you know what we have in these two table, these two charts against sort of idealized um, 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 processes. So, if uh, in in our uh, chapter eighteen, uh, there's a nice uh, set of illustrations which we'll go to. Um, if we can find them, oh, here they are. So. Um, 
uh, to match Nick and Fidel, they basically kind of cite um, illustrations coming from uh, Dixon 1992. And so these are sort of idealized uh, versions of these processes. So you can see that with an ARIMA um, 1, comma, 0, 0, uh, keep in mind, uh, in the parentheses right here, you have essentially what are called PDQ processes. So P is referring to an autoregressive component. So this would be um, an autoregression at lag 1. Um, the D is the differencing that is utilized. So if you didn't use any differencing at all, uh, you would have a value of 0 here. And then the Q process is a moving average. And so here you can see that we have, um, for this first demonstration, uh, a moving average uh, um, process of 0. So this is essentially an AR1 uh, process right here. And, um, and we can kind of evaluate this looking at both the ACF and PACF um, um, correlograms. So you can see that an, an AR1 process, basically what you're going to notice is that on the ACF plot, you'll notice sort of a decaying levels of autocorrelation. But on the PACF, you'll see a... Um, um, a substantial uh, autocorrelation uh, at lag one. So that's that's this is sort of the process that you would expect to see with an AR1 uh, process. Notice that uh, the illustrations right here are using uh, positive autocorrelations, but you can you could also envision the same sort of process um, on the negative side as well. Um, now here you have an air an air arima process where you have a zero on the uh, autoregressive component, uh, zero differencing. So in other words, you know, basically in both of these cases right here, it's, auto, it's automatically assumed that the process is stationary. So there was no need for differencing, and that's why you have zeros uh, uh, right here. So in this process, you've got uh, the a ACF and the PACF. So you'll notice that a moving average one process is really looks uh, pretty much the opposite of what you have right here for an AR1 process. That is that you see a decaying process in terms of the um, um, lags um, and their relationship to, um, to uh, the time T measurement uh, on the PACF, but then you also see um, in terms of the ACF, you see one predominant um, significant lag um, here. Um, when we scroll down a little bit further, you'll see here, this is another example where we have an AR2 process. So in this case right here, you still see sort of the decaying process uh, taking place on the ACF, but in terms of the PACS, you see that we have two significant lags. Um, for the moving average process, we have essentially the opposite. So in this case right here, we have a, this would be a moving average um, 2 process. And up here we have an, an AR2 process. So, you know, keep in mind these are idealized notions. And a lot of times when you're dealing with real data, it's a lot more complicated than just um, looking at sort of these uh, idealized ideas. But these are sort of some general patterns that you can be looking for. Um, here's another um, illustration. Now, this is a situation where we have uh, an AROMA process with zero differencing and a P and Q process. So in this particular case, you'll notice that we have essentially uh, non-zero uh, autoregressive and uh, moving average components. So this is uh, technically an, an ARMA process. So with an ARMA process, what we have is we have sort of this decaying um, uh, lags, uh, uh, autocorrelations um, over uh, a series of lags on both the ACF and on the PACF. So you see that general uh, trend right there. So when you have a decaying process on both of these, then that's going to be evidence of um, an ARMA process, A-R-M-A. Um, now, if you, so, and again, this is assuming that you have um, 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 your variable is um, stationary. And so um, now if it's a case where you have a non-stationary um, series and, um, and you have to use differencing, um, 
you know, prior to using uh, any kind of differencing, you might see this kind of situation where essentially this is an AROMA process with a differencing, um, a, a first order difference. And so if I was looking at my um, ACF and PACF prior to uh, doing any kind of differencing, uh, I might expect something uh, more along the lines of, of this and, and this with respect to uh, these two. Um, and so you can see that the, the lags, um, the autocorrelations, uh, exhibit uh, a lot of similarities in terms of their, their magnitude. And so um, if, that's the, if that's the case, then you've got some evidence that you might have, um, that you might need to difference your, uh, your variable. Um, and then right here, you can see that we have another situation where we have a need for differencing, uh, a first order differencing. And so you, in this case, you can see sort of, uh, uh, you know, some positive autocorrelations and some negatives and sort of, you know, kind of cycling through in this kind of way. But still, you know, a, a lot of the, um, the autocorrelations in the ACF uh, are, are, you know, kind of, uh, substantial, uh, but then on the PACF you see sort of a, a primary um, autocorrelation or partial autocorrelation. So at any rate, like I said, these are sort of idealized um, processes and so uh, it's worth uh, spending a little bit of time kind of reviewing these um, so that it can help you better identify the, the processes that are necessary for your AROMA model. Um, so with that in mind, you know, we've already kind of identified, um, you know, when we look at our um, plots right here, you can see with the quality, now this is following differencing. And so you can see right here that we have, um, uh, for, for quality, you can see that we have, uh, and by the way, these are 95% confidence intervals. And, um, and in this particular case, you can see that we have, um, on the ACF, we have one predominant um, uh, autocorrelation between lag one and time t quality. And then in terms of looking at the um, partial autocorrelations, you can see sort of this decaying lag structure that we saw um, previously. So in this particular demonstration, kind of going back to our um, um, uh, kind of idealized notions, um, what we have is really a process that fits more along this line. Now the differencing, we've already performed the differencing, so technically this is um, a difference of, um, of one. 